All right. Hello and good afternoon, everyone. Okay, so um, I'm going to sit, all right? All right, so I have the extraordinary privilege of being on stage with, I feel like, the thorn with the roses is what I feel like. Kelsey, Scott, and uh, Michelle Prada. I, I, um, I, they really need no introduction because you just saw them, and they're like ruthless. And, uh, but they're fabulous at the same time, if I can use those words. But let's, look, let's talk about it. We got a short period of time, and let's bring them on stage. Kelsey Scott and Michelle Prada. Okay, geez, I know you're full of questions, but I've got some questions too, but let's start with the introductions. First we have Kelsey Scott, you, things you may not know about her. Of course you know her name is Sierra and she sticks people in the head. With, with knives uh, as, a, as a zombie killer. Uh, native of Atlanta, you may know her from uh, 12 Years a Slave where she played Ann Northrup, um, but she's also been on Grey's Anatomy, NCIS, Treme, uh, Army Wives, and a recurring guest star on How to Get Away with Murder. So. All right, so some other things you don't know, and then I'll, then I'll go over to Michelle. Nobody said this was gonna happen. <laughs> no. <laughs> what yeah. are you gonna say? Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> so uh, sh she's a vocalist as well, and you can probably tell that in the tenor of her voice when she speaks, as you'll find out uh, coming up when she answers questions. Uh, uh, when she gets the mic, uh, from productions of uh, Once on This Island, Little Shop of Horrors, and of course our favorite Dream Girls. So, um, but also a public speaker. Sharing the platforms with Ofer Renfrey, Jesse Jackson, Maya Angelou, and the late Shirley Chisholm. And she's a screenwriter, for crying out loud. She's <laughs> motives and motives too. So now let's get to Michelle. So, native of Miami, um, plays Gabby in Passage. You just saw her in dynamic performance. Who, who Miami fans out there? Go ahead, give it up. <laughs> give it up for her, Miami. All right, so uh, the films, she's been in indies, uh, Benjamin Troubles, Eat Spirit Eat, Bachelor of Lions, Tell Me How to Die. She's also, and we'll, we'll hear about this later because it's one of my questions I have to, to her, uh, Demarosa is a video art form project that she uh, participates in. Um, and then also she's in Corporate, being released on uh, Comedy Central later this year. She says it's dynamically funny, so you need to watch <laughs> it, keep an eye out for it. So. Um, uh, you know, I have my questions, and um, I also have questions from the audience, and we'll do this uh, in, in my order, and then I'll switch back. To each of you, to each of you, tell these wonderful, beautiful people out here, <laughs> how'd you get started in this business? Oh, man, um, I, I've been acting my whole life in church plays and uh, as, throughout high school, doing high school musicals and things like that. And um, I came out here on vacation for a month and didn't go back. <laughs> and I didn't really make that decision to be like, I'm gonna be an actress and this is gonna be my thing. But I think in my heart, it was definitely something I always loved and enjoyed. And it just, you know, series of events just kept presenting themselves and it made it really clear that this was really what I wanted to do, so I had to go. Um, and yeah, so this is my first TV thing, so. Give it up for her, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. Perfect. Kelsey Scott. Well, I was, I was always a ham, as my mother <laughs> used to tell me. So the first time I actually stepped foot on stage, I was three. And I was singing You Light Up My Life for the Little Miss Dogwood Festival in Atlanta. <laughs> um, uh, and uh, that was kind of the beginning. Um, my grandmother was a writer. And so she would write poetry and speeches, and then I would take that and deliver it to churches and community organizations and things like that. And so that's actually, so by the time I was speaking with Jesse Jackson, I think I might have been nine. Um, and, and so some, at some point, the public speaking kind of morphed into getting on theater stages and acting. So I think I technically began at six in Atlanta, on the stages of Atlanta. And um, 
then I guess kind of like you, I didn't really kind of make a decision like this is my career. It was just fun. And my mother always said to me, when it's no longer fun, then we'll stop. And um, I'm still having fun. How'd you get here? How'd you get to Los Angeles? Um, what drove you Delta. here? Delta. Um, no, I... <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> and, and, and Michelle, your airline was? <laughs> it was a car. <laughs> <laughs> the drove was Chevrolet. Legs. Yeah. No, I came, uh, I came out after college. Okay. So I went to school in Florida and then uh, made the trek out here. Okay. Um, so Michelle, I already know you've said this is your very first TV experience. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I um, will... When I found out that I booked it, I didn't know what it was uh, until Wardrobe called. And um, I just didn't even realize I was going to be one of the leads of it until the wardrobe fitting, which was two days before <laughs> the starting of shooting. So I'm looking through and I just asked Andrew Bernstein, the director, oh, okay, so what pages am I on? And he's like, all of it. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, and then I was really trying to be cool about it. I was like, of course. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then I called a few of my friends um, and people that I, peers that I really trust, and just plopped that bad boy down. And I was like, I need to figure this out. I don't want to be nervous and the greenest person on set. So hopefully I didn't show too many. Of the <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, so that was, that was my experience with that. Kelsey, your first TV show was a sitcom um, eons ago, <laughs> um, The Robert Guillaume Show, uh, and I played his daughter on the sitcom many, many moons ago. Right, that right, was my right. first television show. And first film? First film was Chocolate City, directed by Rob Hardy, produced by Will Packer, when they were college students. <laughs> Michelle? First film? Uh, my first film was Benjamin Troubles, and it's this small little indie film that um, has this really beautiful story. It's very 80s style, and strangely enough, even though I think that was about four years ago, it just now is coming out in the style of true indie film, but it's amazing because it's, you know, they just did not give up, and and it was also a really fun experience to get to be a lead on something like that for my first film. Okay, for both of you, let's touch on the significance of a female-driven plot. Mm -hmm. For each of you, that's, let's talk about that experience. Well, I think it's something that we're seeing more of, that we need to see even more of, but it's, we see it even less in this genre. You know, generally, the, the horror film is driven by the male, and the girls scream a lot. <laughs> so, it, no, it's, it's, really, uh, it's really empowering to essentially be our own heroes. We didn't require saving. Yeah, or they saving. get killed for losing their virginity or things like that, where you're like, oh, or that. oh well, yeah. <laughs> she's yeah. going to die. Yeah, so I think, I think it's really important. And um, uh, Lauren Signorino, one of our writers, I think it's really important to have a female voice behind the characters, behind the plot. She and Mike Sunik uh, put this world together and uh, and Andrew brought it to life but I think there was a I think there was an awareness of that importance on set okay let's talk about the the uh, the bumps and bruises of what y'all saw there <laughs> I want to know the cuts the scrapes the, the scars the we scars still actually have, have the, on the, our yeah, body let's talk let's okay. talk about those a little bit there's one I didn't cover with makeup yeah <laughs> Still there. Uh, no, no, we, we, we got nice, we nicely battered it. and bruised. Um, and it was interesting because then the last day they brought in stunt doubles. <laughs> yeah. And we said, well, <laughs> we've already done everything. Yeah, I mean, like, that's real blood. Like, why is the stunt double here now? <laughs> so, so uh, no, and I feel like the best part was your stunt was, uh, I think, jumping off of a ladder. They brought in the stunt double for jumping. Oh, no, mine was, one of them was jumping off a ladder. And then yours was taking a fake rock and hitting somebody over the head with it. But it was just like, that's not a real rock. You don't need a stunt Right, that's what they brought the stunt double in to, to use the, the <laughs> rock. But the falling down and the all smoke and the dirt, all that, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so you're talking to real troopers, ladies and gentlemen. You're talking to real troopers. Okay, so let's talk real quickly about... Um, there, are, there are some Emmy nominations flying around this room. And for this... <laughs> So let's talk about what that means for the for the series itself, Walking Dead. 
Yeah, I mean, I think a big, the biggest thing is just uh, giving a lot more credibility to new media. And uh, we've talked about before in other interviews, just uh, allowing more space to diversify the stories and giving people the more of the ability to just shoot things and create it and it really being recognized by you know an award show like the Emmys gives it so much uh, strength in a way that hopefully will inspire people to continue doing more of it and even though um, our story specifically was linked to a big franchise I mean there was still a lot of Lauren and Mike creating the story them really pushing for it and uh, and then us just having to work much longer days because there's never enough money even though they put a lot of money into it there was still days where we were working I mean we were going to home sleeping six hours and having to turn right back around and so um, so yeah I think with the Emmy uh, Emmys opening it up to new media I hope that it will continue to just thrive. Kelsey, your view on that? Uh, it's it's similar, actually. Yeah. I mean, I think that um, one of the most positive things about short form is that you get so many more voices because it makes it levels the playing field. It makes filmmaking more accessible, um, and in the short form format you have the room to explore so many avenues because you're not kind of tied to what well, this, this is a feature length film or this is even a television series in terms of long form. Um, I think that it's a, it's a pioneer, short form uh, medium. And that's the only reason I think why the Academy decided to recognize it. They saw that it's actually making an impact. It's actually making a difference. It's actually uh, giving um, a louder voice to other artists. And so it made sense to recognize them. And it's the future. Whether people don't like it or want to criticize it, oh, it's just YouTube people talking about makeup or whatever, but it is the future. I, you know, it is. There's there's so much even going on uh, now in the world that wouldn't we wouldn't know about if it wasn't for people being able to take their phone and just reveal what's going on. So I think you know it's much it's a much broader uh, conversation to have that I think you know, we're moving towards, it's the future. It makes things possible. You know what I mean? I think, I mean, this is, this is the city of the industry of dreams. And I think the idea that you can take your cell phone and make a bona fide project and it be quality and get distribution and get attention and then somehow get another, you know, nick on your resume that, that begins your career or furthers your career. I think that's what short form yeah. does. I think we actually have a couple of short form filmmakers in attendance today. I know David They're Hunter is out there, um, the creator of The Process. Oh, awesome. I don't know if Latika Sai is out here. Uh, here. And uh, <laughs> so, I mean, I just, I just think that, you know, it's important to even support each other in this endeavor because, you know, we're all artists. Okay, so let's take some questions from the audience before we get down to their, their thoughts. Um, from Max W. Um, do you feel that working in the horror genre pigeon holds you into being a scream queen forever i didn't scream i don't know about you <laughs> did i i had a knife so <laughs> no I, I mean i don't i mean i think there's I, there's always a danger of that but for this particular project i think that that was one of the things that was uh that we looked at with it being female driven and us being our own heroes we weren't calling for help from someone else. It was to each other. I think. Yeah, and then us pushing each other, like pushing each other, or especially my character with Gabby, to find the strength within myself to do that. So, and also, I I think as actors, I mean, you're only as pigeonholed as you allow yourself to be. You can, especially now with new media and stuff. If you want to do other projects and showcase other realms of things that you're able to do, just do it and show it. I think. That's, you know, so pigeonholing, it happens, but I think that we actually are a lot more in control of it than people realize. Okay, next question from um, someone named me. Kelsey, <laughs> not me, it's not me. <laughs> so, so one of y'all out there is a me. Uh, Kel to Kelsey Scott, first nomination, congrats. Thank I also you. heard you, <laughs> okay, uh, give it up for everybody. <laughs> 
So the question uh, reads, I also heard you had a chance to be on the Oscar stage. Tell us about that experience. I did and I was. Um, yes, so for 12 Years a Slave, you know, at the, at the end for Best Picture, anyone who's involved with the film is allowed to take that trek up to the stage. And uh, so I made my way onto the stage with the entire cast and crew. And I think the moment I started walking toward the stage is when I became mute. Um, I didn't really try for that. I got up on the stage, Alfre Woodard says, hello, beautiful, and I just looked at her. And <laughs> then, so I'm standing there and Steve is giving the speech, and I don't know if it was something with the monitors on the stage, but I couldn't hear a word he was saying, I had no idea what he was saying. So I was like, let me just keep an appropriate um, expression on my face. So I'm not like smiling and he's saying something serious. I was just kind of, I was like kind of taking my cue off of the other people and so and then when he started jumping up and down I figured that was the time to smile <laughs> so then the show was over everyone's leaving the stage and Brad Pitt who I had not yet met because we were never on the set together and never at the same premiere uh, is going around shaking everyone's hands and he shakes my hand and he says fine job cricket just nothing and I left the stage. And I think <laughs> like, I'll see somewhere myself out. backstage when I was passing Will Smith and passing Ellen DeGeneres, I might have found my voice again. <laughs> it was great. It was wonderful. <laughs> Next question is from Venezia um, for Michelle. How was your experience during the audition process and callback? Yeah, that's always an interesting story just because we didn't know what we were auditioning for and I thought I was auditioning for a commercial. So <laughs> same here. <laughs> it came yeah, through our commercial agent. We we have the same commercial agent. It came through our commercial yeah. agent. Yeah. And usually they say things like uh, make sure you're prepared with the sides and it's always something about burgers and how you want to go eat them or whatever. So I'm like, okay. And I drive all the way to Santa Monica and it's four pages of sides and it's like I'm crying and it's, it, they're not real sides, they're more, um, you can tell they're trying to see how quickly you can hit these emotions. And uh, they're like, oh, well, if you wanna come back after lunch and I'm thinking, Santa Monica traffic, I'm not trying to get back to Echo Park <laughs> in horrible traffic, so I was like, let's just do this. And I did it. <laughs> and. Um, and I just remember walking out of there being like, what was that? Is this a PSA? Or is this like a, you know, Zoloft commercial? Cause I'm like crying, <laughs> talking about my boyfriend who you, kind of used to beat me, but it's not like said. And it's just like all this stuff. And I'm like, it's fine, I'm stronger now. <laughs> and, then, and then I got the call back and uh, still didn't know what it was until we walked in, or we had separate, uh, castings but um you walk into the room and there's just so many people in the room and you're just like okay um uh, this Zoloft commercial is probably really important um <laughs> and then um and then I got the call I think later that day that um I was pinned and then I booked it and I remember telling my agent but what is it <laughs> And she's like, I don't know. And, uh, and then that was that. And I had planned on going to, um, oh, and this is the other part of that is that uh, I had my boyfriend hates Paris. And I'd convinced him to take a one week romantic vacation in Paris. And uh, I didn't, wasn't even thinking about this last commercial that I went on and I was on the plane and the wheels are taking off and I get the call telling me that I booked it and that it was, uh, and it was from Wardrobe and saying that it was The Walking Dead or Fear the Walking Dead. And I was like, oh my gosh, I have to do this. <laughs> and the plane is taking off, the call drops. I'm just like freaking out. I figured out that you, you can make phone calls on Google over the <laughs> airlines. Um, took me a while to figure that one out. And then I landed and met my boyfriend and told him I had to turn back around and I f waited standby and flew the next flight. And then I got to meet Kelsey. <laughs> it's gay, great it. since you lost your boyfriend. I know. <laughs> I, mean, I left him. He had a whole <laughs> vacation in Paris. And he had a good time. And I remember telling my manager at the time, oh my gosh, I feel so bad. I left him. And it's like, honey, he's in Paris. Like, he's <laughs> fine. <laughs> he's okay. And he's like sending me photos of like baguettes. And yes. I'm she like. She didn't really lose him. That sounds like a David Hunter plot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Kelsey. 
talk to us. Tell us about that audition process. I know it may have been similar, but you know, you you have a interesting slant on uh, how things progress. I know this because I've been camped with her for the last three months. Okay, first, that sounds weird. And then second, <laughs> second, I don't know what this slant is, but I hope I hit it during the story. Okay, um, again, commercial call uh, in Santa Monica. I'm, I, I this was a great project for me because I love when I don't have to worry about my makeup and worry about the appearance of things. I, like, I just want to get in there and do the work. So when I got these sides, which again, like you, I was like, what are we selling? Uh, I said, it was clear that I didn't have to have on makeup. I could just throw on anything. I was like, this is the way to drive to Santa Monica from the Valley. So I go to the audition. It's pretty quick. It's uh, in and out. And then for the callback, much like yours, there were a trillion people in the room. I didn't really understand that. Um, and we're doing these this kind of really deep scene work. And again, I'm thinking, what are we selling? I was like, is this, is yours, this like a yours PSA? Was, Are we, I was like in a refugee Yours was camp. like a refugee survivor. <laughs> like like it, it would have been the worst commercial ever. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so I go in and, and do the callback process. Uh, you know, there are lots of people in the, uh, in the waiting room that I recognize from other calls that I've been on that were all kind of like the same type. Um, and then I just kind of let it go because that's all you really can do. And. Uh, I did make the call to my agent as well, and I said, you know, just out of curiosity, what is this project? And she's, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> and, and then maybe about an hour later, she calls back and she says, so you booked it. I was like, great, what is it? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. We have the same agent, so. Okay, great. Um, and then I got the call from Wardrobe from Fear of the Walking Dead. I was like, oh, that's great. No makeup. So, um, <laughs> yeah, that was my process. <laughs> Told you there was a slant. You didn't believe me, did was you? Was that a slant? Yeah, okay. That was. Okay, so a uh, couple of last questions for y'all. Um, what has been your favorite role to play and why for both of you? See how I just threw that to her? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> threw it back. Um, I don't. I don't know. I don't know if I have. I mean, this one was really amazing, I think, because especially with what was going on with me in my life at the time, it was really great to have a space to just plop when you have these things happening and you're just like, oh, here's this place that I can put it and it's this little capsule and I can exercise it. So this was kind of uh, really amazing. And, and yeah, I mean, I feel like maybe this one. Uh, I think I probably have two. Uh, this one is unique in that there was so much action. Um, there was so much in addition to the acting that had to be done um, and that could not get in the way of the acting. So, you know, you're hopping over things and knowing that the camera is placed here, but this is where the blood has to go. And this, you know, so there, there were all those things to think about but don't lose your character. And so it worked a completely dis different muscle for me. And so I'm, I'm always looking, obviously, to grow as a performer, so I think that not only was I able to enjoy this character, but I was able to find a new skill set and, and test it out and be in a very warm atmosphere that allowed me to do that. So for that reason, this is definitely one of my favorites. And then my other favorite is Rose on How to Get Away with Murder. Uh, why, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, but <laughs> thank you. Um, but what was great about Rose, because I, um, you know, I'm in in real life, I'm pretty type A. I think my manager would say that. Um, I'm pretty type A. I'm really organized. People tend to think, you know, I, I have stuff together, and so I like to play something that's not that, because I don't want to play myself. Um, you know, it's, it's great to be the, lock, the doctor and the lawyer, you know, but I would prefer to play someone who's outside of her comfort zone, who is, who is struggling to hold on, who is battling demons that are exterior and interior. And for Rose, so much of that was going on. In addition to that, she was um, also Haitian, so there was the accent, so that was another kind of skill, another kind of muscle to work. And then because there was such a long arc, on the show, I had the opportunity to really delve into the character week after week and find new things, a type of thing that I usually only get to do in theater when I do the performance over and over again. So that was really nice to be able to do that. And then of course, 
working with Viola Davis. So, you know, that, that little that chestnut. Is, yes, right, <laughs> right. You know, there's nothing that compares to that experience. And talk about growing as a performer. I mean, when you are when you are with someone who is a master of her craft, you can do nothing but grow or sink. And I want to sink. So, um, so for so it would be Rose and Sierra for me. Okay. So, um, uh, for both of you, did you, from William did you find it difficult to maintain positive surroundings while dealing with an intense subject matter like this show uh, for the walking dead passage <laughs> i actually um i'm very sensitive to violence and gore it's not really my genre but working on the set it's kind of it's it's really fun it brings this whole other thing and it doesn't feel negative it doesn't feel dark it actually feels very positive because so much of especially our storyline is surviving and getting together and learning and and uh, realizing we're stronger together and that all felt very positive and everybody we're working with was just having a really good time and working hard everybody from the crew to the stand-ins to the director so it felt very positive it didn't feel I don't know unless Kelsey felt it was negative <laughs> no, I, I can be an absolute goofball, and so yeah. it doesn't matter what the subject matter is for we the had actual. A lot. We were, I mean, we, had, we got along great, so well, and we were we just kind of like a we kind of like became instant friends, yeah. which doesn't always happen on set, and so that was nice because mm -hmm. we really literally had to just like get down and dirty together. So it's great to do that with somebody that you like, as opposed to someone that you're trying to get away from. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it, I I think the set was was a lot of fun. I think it was maybe even because of the gore, maybe because of the subject matter, we made it a point to just have a lot of fun when the cameras were off. Great, great, great. Okay, so uh, some thoughtful one, someone wrote this question, and it's for me. <laughs> That's great, oh, you wanna ask it? Okay. <clears throat> this is not my show, it's their <laughs> show. Uh, so, Mr. Estes, uh, this question is, did you get an Emmy nomination as well? Yes, he did. Yes, I did. <laughs> wait, wait, there's more. Tell us more. <laughs> the show is called Dicks, and it's uh, one of the smallest things that I've ever done probably in my career. Uh, no, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> Tell us more. <laughs> wow. That's on the card. Wow. I did it. I did that, didn't I? Welcome I said to the that. jungle. I did it. Ooh, not until you know you see those words go across the room do you really realize what you said. Okay. Very small production. Very, very small production. Mom and pop organization. I can't believe that. You set, you, Kelsey set me up for that. If anybody's watching. Um, it's a question. Very small. Yes, I did. And it's, uh, it's, that's it. I'm out. Back to one, everyone. Back to one. Sorry. Back to one. So, <laughs> yes, I did. It's on, it's a, it's a Vimeo and dickseries.com. It's a very, uh, yes. And it's about oh. detectives, by the way. It's about detectives. Yes. Dicks. Female, two female detectives. I just happen to play their boss, uh, Sergeant Amanda Smith. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. Wow. Okay, so um, I got the, 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 the last question uh, uh, for these two ladies before we send them off to, to uh, take over the world. Uh, you know, I would like for, for each of you to uh, give at least a thought or an inspiration to the young, the new, the old, the, the actors that are just starting in their careers. What, what words would you give to them uh, about moving forward in this, this universe we called our, our, our acting life here. What is that you would share with them? <laughs> well, it's, it's a deep question. Um, I think that, first of all, is it worth it to you? And if you can't answer yes to that question, I know, right? It'll drive tears to your mm. eyes if you think about it. Um, if you can't answer yes to that question, you've answered so many other questions. This is not a sprint. 
Um, you may think you have seen overnight successes, but really you just weren't aware of all the other nights. And it is important to pay attention to your own voice and to have a tribe that you can trust, who will hold you up, who will sustain you when you feel like you cannot do it anymore on your own. It's worth it for me. And if you answer that as yes, I wish you longevity. I wish you resilience. I wish you the joy of the process because the joy can't always be in the gig because the gigs come and then the gigs don't come. So you have to enjoy every part of it. You have to enjoy getting those sides, memorizing those lines, figuring out what's going on with the emotion of the character. You have to enjoy traveling uh, and being in the desert to do a shoot and getting bruised and battered and all of that has to bring a smile to your heart or this ain't it. Amen. Amen. Michelle. Oh, man. Um, I mean, I can echo all of that as well. And I think, you know, so much of doing what we do is a privilege. We really, we get to pursue our passions. And if you look at what's going on in the world, a lot of people don't get to do that stuff. And it's so easy when we're going on audition or stuck in the traffic and complaining about the little things. And even with this whole experience, you know, being um, now, you know, part of the whole Emmy process, there's these little things that kind of get to you. And it's just important to look outside of yourself and to realize that as artists, we get this incredible opportunity to reflect the times. And going back to the new media thing, we don't need a network to tell us to do that it's okay for us to do that we can do it on our own and to just really take that as something that it you realize is a privilege and it's going to come with the tough and the the joys and everything but that's all part of it and that's that's what makes these building blocks so that when you play these characters you're revealing to other people parts of who, th who they are if you're doing it right. And people that can't put words to what they're feeling, whether it's loneliness or joy or longing or heartbreak and being able to see what you're doing and communicate in that way is just such a privilege. And I think that if you can really take that in and understand that it isn't easy and it's not meant to be, but anything worth having is worth working towards, you know, uh, I think you'll be in a good place. Great. Thank you. Okay, um, ladies and gentlemen, I wanna thank you for personally for being here. I am honored and privileged to have been on this stage with these two beautiful women and such, they're so, they're so talented and it's incredible. It's just like this, this force, this aura <laughs> ar ar around them that uh, you know it will last into the future and their careers will just blossom. So how about a big round of applause for them again? <laughs> Thank you very much.